What is up, y'all? It's the homie Koru, back with another video. Um, just like the title says, it's time for me to come out. Um, I'm not gay. I don't like men. There's nothing wrong with that, you know, if you do. But um, we'll just come right out with it. <laughs> um, I am coming out of the broom closet, as it were, and uh, which... For those of you who don't know, which is probably most people uh, in the world, um, that means that, well, traditionally that means you're a witch, uh, you believe in magic. Um, I do, I believe in magic, and um, technically I am a hermetic magician, and um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of... Give some backstory of how I got here and what what it all means. And then um, at the end, I'll kind of like give some uh, insight on how this, that's going to work into this channel and moving forward. Um, but with that being said, hello, my name is Kovru and I am a hermetic magician. And basically uh, in my family, everyone pretty much is Christian. Um, <clears throat> And not just like a little Christian, we're talking very, very Christian. Um, I have a family member who was a pastor and then a district superintendent and then worked at the world headquarters for a particular sect of the Christian church. Took um, dozens of trips, well, at least a dozen trips overseas to start churches and to um, minister to people. Um, my dad was a pastor uh, for a little while, uh, and I grew up in a parsonage for a little bit. Um, we did church like twice a, twice a week, um, Sunday, Wednesday, very committed to Christianity, being Christian, attending church. Um, so that was huge for me growing up. And of course, as a child, I was just bought into everything. I didn't really think twice about it. I just adopted the same ideologies that I was given and um you know not even by osmosis i mean it was very intentional that i was supposed to be christian if i wasn't then that was very bad um and so i even had a mentor in the church at one point um i saw someone and met with someone in the faith and um they were uh designed to sort of guide me and whatever um i've been baptized um I also went through a um, purity class in church and graduated, which meant that I was ritualistically married to Jesus Christ in front of the church and vowed to stay abstinent until I um, got married. So um, if you let's just say if you don't know about catechisms, don't talk to me about Christianity. And I would say, especially if you know about catechisms, please do not try to talk to me about Christianity. <laughs> um, <laughs> so basically, yeah, super, super Christian. And I don't know how or why, but I just started to have doubts and questions about Christianity and about the faith and um it was just i wanted to explore basically and i think i just i mean who knows maybe maybe there's just a part of me a deep part of me my soul my spirit that just you know was directing me i mean who knows but i just really wanted to explore and wanted to try and figure things out and things just started, you know, things would just not make sense to me. And there were a lot of times where Christians would do things that really just bothered me. Um, and I was like, like even being evangelical evangelism, going out and trying to tell people about Christianity and convert them and convince them that Jesus is the way and that you need to be Christian. Like I remember being like 11 12 and being like what are we doing why are we going out and like yanking people to the side and trying to tell them that if they're not with jesus they're not right or whatever it just because even then i was like if you are doing the right things if you're a good person you should be an example you shouldn't have to convince everyone of 
your way of thinking, people will just see you, see what you do, and they'll be they'll get interested and want to be involved. And that always really bugged me. Um, but I also just, if God's omnipotent, if he's omniscient, if all these things, like part of it just didn't make sense that out of all the possible scenarios that happens in this life, that when you die, you either just go to heaven or go to hell forever. And that's it. Like, it just always kind of seemed to me like you're telling me the God that is love and the God that is everything has this one th area after our lives here on earth w that we just go there and worship him forever. Like it just, I, I just, I don't know. It just didn't make sense to me. And so I began to basically try to figure out the ways that you could test whether or not Christianity was true and real. And so I wanted to try and scientifically figure out if there was a way to prove any of these things. And so I, I found out about things like astral projection and I desperately wanted to slip out of my body and go into the astral realm so I could confront Jesus spirits, find information about the universe. If I could do astral projection, then yeah, per perhaps that even it, in and of itself meant that there was more beyond this life than our physical bodies. Um, that we're all just here. And so I really, really got into stuff. I started reading about other religions and about science and about all these different types of things. And um, it took me down the rabbit hole, to be completely honest, more than anything. And I, uh, <laughs> I decided that I was going to make a deal with Jesus because what I really wanted is the truth. And to this day, my whole foundation for all of my philosophy and everything that I try to do is what is true? What can we test? What can we prove? What can, you know, time irons out everything by way of the truth. And if it's true, then there's nothing to worry about. And so I kind of made a deal with Jesus like, look, if you were a real person 2000 years ago, you really died and came back to life. And if I really die and have to go to heaven or hell or what, I mean, like I'm on your side, bro, but I got to, explore you know and if you're true and if it's all real i'm with you but i don't even know if i'm talking to you so let i'm just so you know <laughs> um but I, I started going down the rabbit hole because when you lose your sense of structure if if you apply yourself to a structure that tells you the way that the world works and you can download all that information and be able to rely on it and regurgitate it. It's kind of easy, no matter what you pick. If it's full-blown atheism and science, if it's full-blown religiosity in any sense of the word, if you, all you have to do is learn what the you know system is and apply yourself to it. It's easy, but when you lose that structure and go searching, it can be very difficult. But that's what I did and that's what I wanted to do because I didn't want to just be told the way that the universe worked. I wanted to figure out how it worked and I wanted to see what was what. Um, which unfortunately led me to lots of conspiracy theory videos on YouTube, to be completely honest. I spent a lot of time and that was when YouTube was a lot more wild, let's be honest. Um, and so trying to go back through history and finding all these things and finding alternative information. You know, I was learning about the Anunnaki who came and genetically engineered humans from apes and tons of shit like that. And just, you know, t found tons and tons of crazy stuff about celebrities too. You know, we're not going to go into that rabbit hole here and now, but I was trying to find as much information as I could about what really is happening in the world what is reality where are we what is this what's happening it was very existential and i felt very very lost and that is until i started to find um, some videos about magic and about hermetic magic and um the basics of hermetic magic are that the universe is mind all is mind and that the universe is not a physical reality um, that, you know, 
consciousness arose out of somehow. The, the, the reality of the hermetic philosophy is that the universe is mind. All things come from mind. All things come from the all mind. And that the all mind somehow created reality in order to have an experiential reality here and to experience um, basically the individuation of all the humans and all of the animals and all of life here um, because that would be the uh, differentiation between being singular and being all-knowing and having a temporary experience, having an experience here, uh, which is basic hermeticism 101 in a super short nutshell. Um, but it really resonated with me because even though I, you know, I abandoned Christianity, I abandoned you know, that type of philosophy. Um, and if the reality, and I still believe this to this day, if the reality is that we are just meat computers, we just evolved out of dirt or whatever, and when you die, nothing happens. If that's the truth of reality, that's, that is what it is. But I've had enough things happen in my life where I just couldn't, that couldn't be it. And so the hermeticism really res resonated with me. So I started um, learning as much as I could about it and started really getting in depth with everything about it. And, um, it hasn't failed me to this day. And, um, I remember, um, I'm sure I'll share plenty of stories throughout the course of these videos on this channel, but, um, I remember it's very simple and it sounds silly, which I'll explain more of why some of these things sound silly, probably in a later video. But one of the first spells that I actually did was I was out front of my house and I was trying to change the oil on my car and I got under the car and I was yanking my, um, my wrench to try to get the nut off of the oil pan. And it was so stuck on there that I could not budge it at all. Like it wasn't even like barely, it wasn't like whatever it was like, it was on there and it was so on there that I was just, I needed to take a minute. I came inside and I was like, wait, I'd been learning about magic. I've been learning about mentalism. And so I was like, let's cast a spell and see what happens. And so I cast a spell for the, for the bolt on the oil pan. And then a little later I went back outside. I could undo it with my hand. It was that loose. I don't know, no idea, but for me in that anecdotal experience of seeing this sort of interaction between myself and the universe and reality, it just, it, I, I've had that experience so many times with so many different types of things that, I mean, you know, I'd, I'd like to still say that I approach it scientifically. I do not think that it's, you know, woo woo i try to stay within the middle pillar and with the line of what is real and what is true but it's clicked for me and so um basically uh i just wanted to kind of like lay that out lay that down put that out there and i this this video also is going to be a really great um launching pad for all the videos that i do have in store because I am going to go in depth on about a lot of different manifestation techniques, about a lot of different types of magic, and about a lot of different universal truths in, in conjunction with lots of real life, real world, really practical things that um, I'd like to share as well. But to have a foundation for this moving forward, I really wanted to try and explain my story, where I'm coming from, and how I got here. And so I think that's about it. Um, I found it pretty hard to be able to try and open up about this as if anybody who's come out of Christianity knows it can be very hard to talk about or to try and put it out there publicly. Um, and so I, I respect everyone's beliefs, whatever you want to believe about reality. I do not want to argue with anyone and I think that that's one of the beautiful things about this life is that we do get the ability to believe whatever we'd like. And so, um, no hate against anyone, but, um, you know, I wanted to share my story and I wanted to set the foundation for everything I got coming in the future. So 
with that being said, I appreciate you watching so much. Hopefully, um, we're going to have a lot of fun with a lot of different videos I've got cooking up. And I appreciate you watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.